Let's stand for our scripture reading from Psalm 42. Um, the Psalms are so interesting because the writer's happy, the writer's sad, the writer's joyful, the writer is worried. Um, I selected this um, passage today because in the midst of an oppressive time, in the midst of uh, less than the best times, he is remembering to put his trust in God. He's remembering what, it's, what it means to be a part of God's family from Psalm 42. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with him? My tears have been my food day and night, while others say to me all day, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me, yet I will remember you, from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mazar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me. It's interesting, you know, he's talking about how difficult it is, but still, in the daytime he senses God's love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones are suffering mortal agony as my foes taunt me. Again, they say to me, where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for still I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Dear friends, this is the word of the Lord. May God send his Holy Spirit to bless it to our hearts as we gather in his name today. Please be seated. Tomorrow is All Saints Day, November 1st. It is Christian Memorial Day. Before Memorial Day became a national holiday for Americans, the last Monday of May? May? Okay, thank you. For centuries, the church has remembered All Saints Day, November 1st. Because every good religious holiday needs a party the night before, uh, kind of a tailgate thing, they also had on October 31st something called All Hallows Eve. And since November 1st, All Saints Day is about remembering those who have died and gone to be with the Lord, All Hallows' Eve was a chance to make popcorn and who knows what else they did. Uh, it was a long time ago. And uh, somehow that turned into Halloween. I don't know how, I don't know why, but uh, you'll see the, the resemblance in the name from All Hallows' Eve to Halloween. Um, and I hope everybody has fun tonight that wants to, to have fun but be good, right? No tricks. Um, and I'm sorry, but I will digress for a moment because Halloween was a fun time in my house. My mother was very, very concerned about living the correct Christian life, always worried about what she was doing right or wrong, but on Halloween, she didn't care. <laughs> Halloween was just fun. And, and witches might have been bad the rest of the year, but on Halloween, she had a sign on, that she put on the front door, and there was a box on the porch, and the sign said, Welcome, kitties. Put your goodies in the box below. Go quietly, and no one will get hurt. <laughs> and, and besides all the wonderful memories that I have of taking my little children when they were little, around to places. One of my favorite memories was um, a couple of years when I was younger and more ornery. Um, we had a, a bench on, on the front porch, kind of off to the side, and 
I would get dressed up like a scarecrow, you know, mask, hat, straw coming out to where you, when you walked up, it just looked like a scarecrow. And I would lay there perfectly motionless on this bench. And I could hear the kids stop and tend, is that real? Is that real? And I wouldn't move. And I wouldn't really like terrify them. But when they get up there, I'd just, just kind of just give it a little bit. Oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> so much fun. Um, but I want to encourage all of you tomorrow to make a spiritual day of All Saints Day. And I want you to take the few moments tomorrow to think about those whom you've known and loved that have gone to be with the Lord. And I want us to just take a minute now, a moment of silent prayer to give thanks for their lives. Father, we remember and celebrate, and we are so grateful for our loved ones. May we so live, may we so give our lives to you that one day someone will pause to remember and give thanks for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Celebrating, it's not something I do very well. I'm just sort of a task-oriented person. You know, for the last few weeks, we've been working on the walking trail, getting in benches and flagstones and different things uh, for the walking trail and the stations of the cross. And it doesn't occur to me that we should ever stop and have a party, that we should ever stop and pat each other on the back and celebrate what we've done. But people that are smarter than I am tell me that the way I live is not a healthy way to live, that sometimes it's really important to stop and celebrate, to just look and remember who are we, what's good about it, uh, what are the things that makes us want to be a part of this thing, and, and, and to just give thanks and, and enjoy the, the moment. So today, um, as the psalmist said, I remembered when we used to go up to the, to the house of God with, with joy and thanksgiving, I was part of this great throng, um, I want to invite your heart to just kind of look back and remember um, and, and, and celebrate some of the great things that there are about being a part of, of your church. So um, this is kind of like Woods Chapel Home Movie Day. The rainbow, by the way, uh, that is not a staged picture. Uh, God actually made that happen one day, and uh, that is your church, baptisms. Oh, when a life begins. Oh, and a life begins. You know, whether a child or, or a young person or even an adult coming to be baptized, there is this beginning of the journey thing that we feel as someone is, is baptized, and, and we watch these moments, and, and, and they go by, and we remember that so-and-so got baptized uh, but don't you know that for these people and for these families, these are awesome moments. Chris Minshaw being baptized two years ago by his grandpa. This was on baptism weekend at the Lakewood Lake. This is the Berg family, and this is my younger brother in the middle holding uh, uh, Adam, Adam Berg. Uh, that was in the old church. And there's Adam here on the, on the left now, and younger brother Andrew, uh, and there's Ephraim and Sherry Rivers. Ephraim was on staff here um, for a few years. Holding these children, and having been here long enough now to watch these children actually be teenagers and driving their parents crazy, it's an awesome thing. <laughs> and I've had the chance to talk to some of them about baptism, about their life, and I tell them, I remember holding you. I remember when you were a baby, and we took you in our arms, and, and we prayed for you. There's one of the many Bartman children being baptized. <laughs> Pastor Sherry, I think this is... 
Paul McLean's daughter, and her name starts with an A, and what's wrong with me? Erica, that's almost an A. It's an A sound. <laughs> and just for the, you know, it's not that I forget these things. I just can't always find them in my brain. Uh, baptism by pouring, one of my favorite things. Three pitchers in the name of the Father, the Son. See, Brian's got pitcher number two right there. Pastor Donna Hoover baptizing someone in the celebration garden. Pastor Gina. Uh, <laughs> one of the most privileged things that I get to do at this church is to stand up here and take the hands of a bride and groom and pray that God will bless their life together. It's Jim and Pam Dittmer. Would y'all stand? I don't know that you and I have ever had this talk. <laughs> but when you came to us and you were so sick with leukemia, there was one time when I didn't know what the outcome of all that was going to be. But I am so thankful and so happy for you, both of you. Oh my goodness, that is Dan Hill and Tracy Chapel. Look how young your church building looks. There's no windows and just the plants were smaller, they hadn't grown. <laughs> there they are. That was 10 years ago. In fact, uh, Dan, Dan sent me a note. Uh, we were just looking for a place to get married Neither Tracy or I had a church home. We didn't even go to church very much. We were driving down 291. We'd noticed the progress of the church as it was being built. We kept saying, wow, that's going to be a beautiful church. We should consider getting married there. So you hear what he's saying about themselves? We weren't really church people. We weren't really looking for a church. We just wanted to get married somewhere. We attended our first service on Father's Day, 1999. The services were held in the gym. The sanctuary was still under construction. We instantly felt the love and grace of the people at Woods Chapel. So here is a couple who isn't even interested in attending church, but they're coming because they want to get married here. And you reached them just by being the kind of people that you are. This was unlike any other church we had ever been to. We started attending regularly. We quickly realized that this was not only a place for us to get married, but for us to learn to draw closer to the Lord. We took membership classes and joined later that year. Tracy and I were married on June 17, 2000. That was 10 years ago. You want to see him now? Uh, isn't that awesome? What a, what a gift a church family is. That is young Dave and Jennifer Dancy about 10 years ago. Anybody know those people? 10 years ago, Ed Towhill and Kelly Bass. Look what can happen in 10 years. Yeah, the parents are still smiling. <laughs> it never occurred to me in my life that a church could or would have a ministry of helping people adopt. When I went to seminary, it never crossed my mind. You know, you become a pastor to to preach sermons and 
teach people the Bible and help them learn. And I will tell you, over the past four, five, six years, however long this has been going on, the stories that I hear of the hearts of parents and their search for a child and the stories I hear of the needs of these children. Today we could show you hundreds of pictures. That's a little misleading. That's not the adoptive parent. In fact, I'm not sure the dog's real keen on this at all. You know, you have to ask yourself, when you see these children, what would their life be like otherwise? Some of these children have come from very difficult places. The motto of our adoption group is, because ev every child deserves a loving home. And you give life to these families and to these children. And every now and then you just ought to remember the good joy it also did not occur to me when I was in seminary the importance of reaching out in mission but I have come to learn and I have told you this many times that I have watched you sit in these pews and listen to Jeff's sermon in Jeff's sermon out and nothing changes some even Sermon, Sunday school, Bible study, information in, information out, nothing changes. But every time someone goes in mission, their heart is changed, their life is changed. And so these opportunities, free health clinic, loading a container for Liberia, giving blood, the prom dress ministry, the Thanksgiving food collection, and I think after church, the bags are ready if you want to pick them up. These are the things by which we tell God we love you and we love your people. When we take these actions, we are saying our faith is not just something in our head, but we are living out what it means to be a Christian. Young man from Belize, working in Guatemala, Hillcrest Homeless Ministry. I don't know what that is, isn't that scary? It's Grace United. I knew what it was. I was just saying it was scary. Yes, it is. Here's some guys on a roof in Greensburg. If you want to feel, if you don't feel connected to your church, get on a mission trip somewhere. Go spend time with people who are giving themselves away in the name of Christ. Quilters, Guatemala, I think, New Orleans. Fifty-five people attended last month's Remember class. Everything that you do to provide a loving home makes others want to be a part of this place. These are new members from last month. 
There's also those that we have sent, people that were a part of our church family that went into ministry full time. And every time someone takes that step, we are exponentially growing our work for Christ. Kate McLean came out of our church before I got here. She's the pastor today at First United Methodist in North Kansas City. That's Peggy Schwartz's sister. Sandy Nenendahl also came out of our church before I got here. Uh, Sandy is the district superintendent in the Southwest District. Sherry Swanson, Gina Kennedy, both licensed local pastors serving on our staff. Bob Jepson came out of our church a few years ago, was appointed to two churches near Odessa, Woods Chapel, Odessa, and Wesley Chapel. This is him on a mission trip in Haiti. Stacy Williams is in seminary now, uh, but serving a United Methodist Church near Concordia, Missouri. Each of these people sharing God's love, reading the scripture, praying for people on Sunday morning. If you are visiting today, I want to say to you, if you want to be a part of a place like this, we welcome you. If you're here today and this is your church home, I want you to know that we have much to celebrate. Just like the psalmist said, man, we, we went up there, it was a throng. It was a joyous, happy throng. We have so much to celebrate. And your works of love, your caring for one another, and your gifts to your church make all of that continue to happen. So we're going to spend a few moments now. Chris is going to play. I invite you to bring your commitment cards if you've brought one. And then we'll return to our seats and sing Grace Alone. Won't you come? <laughs> 